Here's how I'm using Cursor's new browser feature to edit designs directly in the code base. Select an element, prompt a change, and it updates instantly. It's not Figma, not a replacement for design tools anytime in the near future, but it is a step in the direction to show us what is going to be possible. Hey, I'm Diane. I'm the co-founder of The Design Project. Today, we help over 50 B2B SaaS teams ship products faster with AI. Our customers have been acquired by NVIDIA, Slack, and Mr. Beast. Today, I'm gonna walk you through Cursor's new browser feature, what it is, where to find it, and how I actually used it to build a real feature. So what exactly is the browser in Cursor? It is an agent that can control a web browser and actually test your applications, visually edit layouts and styles, audit accessibility, and even convert designs into code, all with full access to council logs and network traffic. Basically, what this means is I can actually go in to my design, change things around, and it's magic, the code will update immediately. Now, let me show you how I actually use it on a real feature. So I'm gonna use cal.com as my test project to show you today. cal.com is open source, so I have the whole project right here. So you can see here, this is my cursor open. My project, here is Claude code. This is what I'll be chatting with. And then here is the browser feature. So I have my server running. It is here open. And when I click here, I actually am using the browser feature. See how I can go in and click on individual elements. And then you'll see here what pops up are these are all the components. So it's actually showing you exactly what I have selected. And I can come in here and I can actually play around with the spacing, which is really cool and it's going to automatically make these changes to the code. Um, so there's appearance, there's text, I can change color, background, border. It also has these properties, so I could come in here and change up the actual class names, titles, I could change this, and it's gonna update right here, you see? Very, very cool. The other thing to show you is that when I have this selected, it's actually going to put this div the tag the actual component that i'm in right here can make a change here and it's actually going to change the code I'm actually chatting with the cursor agent right now so you'll see this in a second when i actually build the feature so the feature i want to rebuild is when i go into availability and the other day i had to create a new calendar i have to put a name in here call it youtube hours and then i have to click continue and then it gives me this page where i can actually make my availability I was thinking, why is it two steps? I would rather everything be in one place. So let's design it. So the first thing I did was sketch it out. So I knew how I wanted the actual screen to look using the components that already existed. So here's my sketch. So it's basically the design that exists today pulling from the component library. But here I'm adding a section called name. So it removes that two-step process. Now I'm going to go into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to come up with a prompt for Claude Code to actually make the changes that I'm suggesting here. I want to prompt Claude Code to take the existing, add a new schedule flow and change it. I want to tell Claude to go look at the current flow and add a new schedule. My new flow, when a user clicks the plus button to add a new schedule, instead of a pop-up, it should go straight to the availability screen. Just add a form field at the top for a user to be able to name the schedule. See sketch attached. So, it came up with it. The big thing I wanna tell you here is I love that it comes up with the full prompt and details, but please, please, please read through the prompt. Don't just copy and paste it and go in and delete things that don't make sense or reword things. So I'm gonna go through this really quickly. Um, I'm, I'm gonna change some things. So yes, this all makes sense. Current click, new. Step one, I love this, investigate the current flow. How is it popping up? So it's actually going into the code base and looking up how it currently functions and then implement this new remove disable modal, perfect, navigate and change. On the availability screen, add a name field, bind it to the schedule draft model, perfect. Save behavior, keep the exact same behavior but ensure a new schedule. UI requirements, match sketch. Write a short summary, a file change, perfect. So I think the couple things I'm going to remove, um, this initially is a new draft. I don't fully understand what that means. And I want to make sure that when I actually send it, that I understand everything that it's saying, or I could, if you're still ask, if you're confused, ask questions. 
Um, so let's do this. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to remove the things when I go into Claude Code. Perfect. So I'm going to go into Claude Code. I'm going to paste the prompt. Now it is going in and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so it looks like it finished, summarized the changes here, the new flow. So it clicks. Okay, perfect. Let's see how it turned out. Awesome. Okay, so I can fill this out. YouTube times. Everything. Okay, perfect. Um, there you have it. So it built this, which is super cool. Now let's actually play with the browser editor, right? So we're going to turn it on. And now we can go in here. Um, so something we could do, see how this I noticed is not in um, the border. So I'm actually going to click. So now that it's selected, see, I have the div selected. I'm going to say, create a border pulling from the border styles on the, what is it called? On the date override, override section. Let's see what it does. So what's really cool is it is, I can literally, it's doing this because I'm selecting this. So I'm actually in the browser um, making edits and changes and it sees what I'm doing and pulling from that, which is really, really awesome. And a new thing that I've never been able, I've never seen before. Okay, so see, it does have a border and now I can play with the padding and spacing, right? Directly in the browser. How cool is that? Um, this is where it gets a little tricky is adding spacing. So there's only so far I can go here. So clearly I need to add space to here, but I need to select the whole page and it actually gets a little tricky when you start to do things like that. Um, so there's clearly still some limitations. For instance, let's say I want to move this around. Um, it's not like I can actually like move it like say I want to move it over date override or under add an, a review it see how it doesn't really let me so you can see that it's not really quite there for actually being able to make like full design changes but I'm able to do seeing things in here and I am able to go in um and change the names and everything directly in here instead of having to go into Claude code and say hey can you change the name here I can literally just do it which is really really cool so my honest take is that it is really cool to see cursor going in this direction. It is not currently usable. I can do little things here and there, but I'm not actually able to make changes. The really, really exciting thing that I want to share with you guys is that this is the beginning of the future. We will be able to no longer just design and dev separately. They will merge together and that's coming sooner than we think. And this is stage one. So if you want to try this yourself, open your project in cursor, launch the browser feature, select elements, play with prompts, change things around, use it more for fine tuning, not for building from scratch, obviously, like I shared. If you found this valuable, give it a like and subscribe. I'm creating more content on building faster with AI. Thanks for watching. Now go ship something amazing.